Okay, thank you very much. I'll try still to speed up so we are in time. Okay, my name is Cecilia Brown. I am uh, also part of the, the SURE network in a bigger sense. I've been working with the SURE network in many roles and recently gone freelance and I was commissioned by Metrics to develop the SURE roadmap. And uh, I think you've seen it already I and mean, it's uploaded also on our current conference website. But I was uh, commissioned by Metrics and Shure Partners to develop this roadmap last summer with the support of Alan Krita Sakar and Robert Bosi. And we've heard already about the Shure network, what it is and what it comprises of. So it's cities and regions, and we're up to 18 partners by now. And I think what's a crucial matter is that during the composition of the roadmap, it became very clear that we need to make a differentiation between what is the network and what is the territory. So the network is primarily these practitioners, these cities and regions, and it's a growing network day by day, but it's definitely as an organizer and facilitator towards developing the uh, territory, or let's say the functional urban area, this region, this fuzzy with fuzzy borders, territory or mega region, as we would call it now. And I think the Shure network creates this awareness for this Euro Delta mega region. But this map we've seen before also in Emma and Dagmar's presentation, it's uh, pioneer partners, pioneer regions and cities, but also new potential partners that are joining. And over the course of the summer, I interviewed up to 17, 18 uh, of these partners in semi-structured interviews for quite some time. And we came up with a lot of interesting discussions on the topics of common interests. Some of them you heard today some of them have also been developing over the past uh, year, and we've, we constantly find more subjects that are relevant, as we've seen in the webinars that we're constantly uh, developing further. And I think what's important to know is that this focus on cross-border collaboration is one of the key assets of the whole uh, Euro Delta mega region, because it's really very much intertwined. And as we've seen from the maps now also of Paul, there's so much going on and there's so much that we need to pay attention to. But what is the actual added value? And the added value is that I think the Shure network can act as a facilitator for this joint activities that we need to develop and define. And that will help to shape and foster this cross-border cooperation with more structure. And creating this EuroDelta knowledge platform can also help to develop that database that we need this common ground for argumentation and for action on the scale of the EuroDelta. So what was the goal of the road Shure map? Uh, roadmap sure and I think of course we we were looking for strategies also organizational forms of how can this network develop and does it want to stay informal or does it want to develop into a formal network per se at some point in time and what kind of tasks and projects are important for the network and can be resolved in the future also very important and that's also why the interviews were done is to find out what are the core values the driving forces behind this alliance that is step by step growing and in order to do so we also had to explore the scope and the composition of what is already happening on the scale of the euro delta and beyond and for that we've developed this map which gives you a bit of an overview of what networks like euro cities also metrics regions but also the string network as mentioned earlier on in one of the lunch forums we also have eu macro regional strategies that are also joining or, or touching upon the scope of the euro delta like the danube and the uh, rhine alpine corridor which are all very much based also on delta on waterway and water management systems and also the north sea region but these networks are really important to build also upon in terms of what knowledge have they produced and where do we have connections because we cannot create extra work here but we would should find synergies wherever necessary and this is why some of these interviews were also made with other networks what are the main outcomes there is a of course one of the things that came up very much is this idea of benefits of scale we heard about this from Koba also borrowed size, so agglomeration economies. So what is the benefit of working across borders and on this scale is that we can also save energy and we can maybe save infrastructure if we link everything better together. And the driving force behind the network is this coalition of the willing, which is also what's happening right now today with this entire conference and symposium. And the USP, so the unique selling point is it's a, 
only mega region of the scale. It's a unique territory in Europe, in Northwestern Europe. And this is making it really interesting also to work from a cultural and historical perspective. Some of the values that were mentioned are well being, attractiveness, and openness, but very important connectivity. And the approach that we're looking for is holistic, pragmatic, and integrated. And in terms of what this network could look like, it's very much favored for a step by step development. And if you look at this map, so this is primarily the roadmap. And and this is one of the main outcomes, I think. And here you see again the differentiation between the shore network on the left side and the Euro Delta as a mega region down below. So you see it's growing into one. The idea is with the step-by-step -step involvement of the network and of the at the same time territory or urban region, this is going one in one together because the network is facilitating the growth. And here you can see also this is the first proposition, but what could happen in the years to come up to 2050. But of course it's very rough and we're happy now with the first step to go with more concrete visions and ideas. So why are we collaborating? It's as mentioned before also by Paul, there is this clear urgency and we see it, we need this sense of ownership also more of the entire network and more participation. So it's important that we all become active and speak up and bring up this bottom-up approach and not a top-down mega regional uh, argumentation, but rather really looking for this growth from, from the bottom. And this is creating a sense of ownership. And the challenges and potential of the mega region, they go in line with each other. So they're challenges, but they're also potentials. And I think it's important to develop now in a first stage, this relationship between research practice and also the people, the people that actually live in the Euro Delta and that get affected by whatever measures are to come. And of course, one of the most important things is also to develop these uh, relationships with funding so we can produce outcomes like in joint projects as Dagmar mentioned earlier on, but also to build programs that implement good ideas and last but not least to form alliances. And I think this is a first step in forming an alliance and I think we're very excited that you are involving, that you are involved in this and you can produce. And what you produce will be flowing into the Zero Delta Knowledge Platform, that is the development of a platform in the long run for this continuous exchange between academics, experts, and practitioners, but also decision makers. And I think one of these pilot programs, I mean, the work that we're doing right now in progress, the online symposium and this exchange between experts, that's really the first step. And I think next generation is really important in this game because you contribute to this development of the Euro Delta and that again creates more ownership and you can voice your ideas. And I think it's really important that always bear in mind it's a step-by-step -step development process and such a process can be seen as a product or products. And that in itself is a new form of collaboration that we're exploring right now. And I think it's important to hear now uh, also uh, I'm happy I can give you the chance to introduce to you Markus Nollert, our keynote speaker, and he's a former colleague of mine also from ETH. And he has been over the last decade intensively dealing with the theory and the practice of developing such processes. And we can also call them informal planning procedures, but that simply help us to leverage this innovative ideas and design thinking. And we can take that into a next level and also that level of the Euro Delta. And by bearing that in mind, I think the step-by-step -step process is such a, a good first step in getting somewhere. So it's really happy and I'm very happy that you are becoming an active part in this. So the floor is yours, Marcus. <laughs>